Stanislaw here with Motion VFX, and this lesson is about using some of the new features inside MO2. Two of those new features we're going to talk about in this lesson are the new texture mapping options we have in MO2, as well as the new blend mode that we can use to composite keyed footage into our MO2 scenes. As you can see in this demonstration, I have some keyed footage of a girl in the scene with additional 3D items all composited together. Let's take a look at some of these new features. I'll navigate to my materials, our texture mapping, and our tile mode. Since we can control the mapping scale and position, at some point the texture may no longer reach the entire surface of our model. Once this happens, MO2 will tile this texture by default to fill these gaps. By default, we have our repeat. This is the default setting that will cause the texture to tile on the surface of the model. Mirrored Repeat. Similar to the repeat mode, it will cause the texture to tile, but in this case, each tile is going to be a mirrored version of its neighbors. Clamp. Choosing this mode will prevent the texture from tiling, so once the border of the texture is reached, it will be extended along the model's UVs. Moving to our opacity channel, we no longer see the default transparency mode. It's still here though, it's just been renamed to refraction, which makes sense because it's mainly meant for creating refractive materials. In our opacity channel, alpha cutout mode, two additional options were added. The first parameter is the cutout threshold. This will determine the alpha value, above which the surface is considered fully opaque. Values below this will be rejected, resulting in a fully transparent surface. Use Albedo Alpha. Once this option is enabled, ML2 will read the alpha channel from the current material's albedo texture and use it as the source for the opacity channel. It can be used to read alpha from a video placed in the albedo drop zone. But since this feature allows to use an existing albedo texture, instead of loading a new one, it's also useful for optimizing the material's VRAM usage. A new transparency mode called Blend has been added to MO2. Contrary to the alpha cutout mode, Blend allows us to create materials that contain completely transparent, completely opaque, but also semi-transparent areas. It's also different from the refraction mode because areas with 0% opacity will indeed be fully transparent. They will not refract objects located behind them or contain any specular reflections. These properties make it perfect for incorporating elements such as keyed green screen footage into the MO2 scene. The Blend Opacity mode includes several parameters for controlling its behavior. Lowering the opacity slider will make the material more transparent, while increasing it will make it more opaque. Using the Albedo Alpha, once this option is enabled, MO2 will read the alpha channel from the current material's albedo texture and use it as the source for the opacity channel. It can be used to read alpha from a video placed in the albedo drop zone. Opacity Texture. Clicking on this button will launch the texture library, from which you can load one of the included textures, as well as import your own images. White pixels represent fully opaque areas. Black pixels represent completely transparent ones, and values in between will result in semi-transparent surface. Texture Mix. Once an opacity texture is picked, the pixel brightness will determine the opacity of the specific areas of the material. Its overall influence can be controlled via the texture mix parameter. Lowering it will mix values from the pick texture with the opacity values specified above. Let's take a deeper look at this blend mode and build this scene. I have a new scene set up with a few items. There's an environment background and a couple items animated in the scene, as well as a primitive plane that I want to put my footage on. I have some green screen footage that I want to incorporate into my scene. Here's the original. For this composition, I would like this model to seem like she's interacting with the other 3D objects in my scene. I also want a cylinder with a video texture to wrap behind my model. By turning on my perspective camera, I can see my items animated and that my plane is intersecting this cylinder that I want to wrap behind my model. For time purposes, I've already keyed out the footage and imported it into motion. I've already added a material to my plane. Let's go ahead to the albedo channel and change its texture. In the Material Albedo channel, I'll change this to Drop Zone and place my keyed footage in this layer. I can see my footage is indeed in the scene, however, it's not currently using the Alpha channel. I'll navigate to the Opacity channel 
and choose the new mode, Blend. Once I've selected Blend, I can check the Use Albedo Alpha checkbox, which will use the alpha values from our video. Let's brighten this model just a bit. I'll click the Use Albedo Texture checkbox to make sure we're brightening up the surface using the Albedo Texture instead of a single flat color. I'll increase the intensity value to 0.7. Playing this back, I can see my model is now keyed in the scene. My objects are in front of her, animated, and the cylinder is behind her. Let's add a new texture to this material. In my scene structure, I'll click on my Cylinder 2 material, navigate to the Albedo channel, and specify the drop zone for the texture source. Using my other footage I've brought in, I'll apply it to that drop zone. Now I've successfully incorporated my keyed footage with alpha channel into my scene. There are limits to using the new blend mode, however. Let's see what I mean. I have a new scene with a series of five planes and have a blend mode set to each of them. However, moving my camera across my scene, I can see that the blend mode only works for up to three items in my scene. Increasing or decreasing the values will not have any effect on the remaining items in my scene. I'll take this last plane and increase its illuminance to something very high. I can see that it is indeed quite bright. However, moving my camera across the scene, I can see that it is not visible through my other blended items. The maximum items I can have is three. So that's a quick tour of the blend mode and some new features in MO2. For more information and tutorials for MO2 and other Final Cut Pro 10 and Motion plugins, visit motionvfx.com. My name is Stanislaw Robert Liberta and I'll see you next time.